The final item to be considered separately, Your Honor, is item G, real property exchange of right of way for the 22nd Street and Keno Boulevard intersection improvement project. This was pulled at the request of the Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have, I have, I have asked that pool consent item G for separate consideration. This agenda item is not just about exchange of a surplus city owned parcel and right of way. This agenda item is not just about the city obtaining title to land for transportation improvements associated with the 22nd Street and Keno Boulevard intersection improvement project. This agenda item is about the developer's vision, the surrounding neighborhood support, community organizations collaboration, and a new project to benefit the South Side as well as our future students attending the University of Arizona. What JWR Holdings LLC and Landmark Properties wants to do on the southeast corner of 22nd Street and Park area is to build a low density student housing option to Tucson cottage style housing. This type of development, not a mini dorm, has been done in other cities across the country. What is proposed here is a 188 unit development, casita style, gated community, which is less than current zoning regulations. These landmark properties are managed and their student lease agreements language restricts gathering hours and frequency and outlines the management enforcement of community rules and regulations. Residents are fined and or evicted for violations of the com community policies. My office has coordinated the meetings between the developers and the surrounding Ward 5 neighborhood associations as well as community organizations and the city manager's office for this project. Present today are Conrad Sick with JWR, John Ash with CBRE, the principals involved with this project. Also here for this item is Hector Martinez, the interim real estate director, a valued member of the Tucson community. Mr. George Khalil, president of the Millville Neighborhood Association is here, along with the Millville board on behalf of this proposal. Mr. Jonathan Peck, the president and CEO of the Tucson Urban League, is present as well to discuss the projects and how this will benefit the community as well as the efforts of the Tucson Urban League. At this time, I would like to call Conrad Sick to the dais. Conrad. Honorable, uh, can everybody hear me? Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, members of the council and uh, guests. Uh, tonight I have the privilege of describing the project uh, very briefly, and I do that with a perspective uh, from a developer but also from a father. Um, from a developer's perspective, I've had the opportunity to build on the uh, U of A campus, working with U of A and, and understanding the needs of the university and its students and understanding clearly the, the fabric of the community uh, from all the varying sides uh, that adjoin the campus. From a father, my daughter is in her uh, It'll be her senior year this next year, and seeing her path uh, with the as a student of of U of A and as a wildcat uh, coming here, uh, enjoying the the dorms, and then basically progressing forward out into the community, searching for student housing. This project is one that um, we've looked at, and I think many are familiar with some of the higher density type of projects or programs that are. Are, are being and, and are underway, and we've been involved in those as well uh, in the downtown area. This one is, as uh, the Vice Mayor indicated, is a, a low density program, and it basically is looking at, at a uh, student housing type that is half the density of the proposed densities that are in the, 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 the community uh, where the property exists, and it's developing homes for these students in a very traditional format very much like the the neighborhood so it's not a mini dorm and what it's doing is taking the pressure off the existing neighborhoods that um, would be seeing many students occupying homes in adjacent to families and so forth so this is pulling those together in a large community so this is in excess of 20 acres it embraces the new gateway bridge that's going to be located the overpass at Keno and 22nd Street, so it now consolidates that entire area into a comprehensive community specifically for the students that uh, will keep them out of the, the varying neighborhoods at a low density that then is consistent with the existing neighborhood that surrounds it and uh, then in, in enables those students to live within a 
more of a destinational uh, location where they'll be supported with on-site security. They'll have all the amenities there on site you know, to, to provide this housing. The outreach on this, um, as Vice Mayor has indicated, has been um, far or, or vast with the varying neighborhoods. Uh, the, the ward officer, uh, Vice Mayor, and his staff assisted us in several uh, meetings and uh, meetings with the, the neighborhood, which is, has been great from understanding exactly what their, their issues are and, and working through those. So today we are excited about the project and its schedule will be consistent with the delivery of that overpass. So it's, it's almost like a, well, it's, it's like a two for one where the, the community will see this new overpass. They will also see the balance of the land use around it being uh, redeveloped and brought to uh, its highest use and a new community for that location, which I think will be a uh, lead for many new things and great things to, to occur within that community uh, over the, the short and long term. So, um, Vice Mayor, I turn it back to you. Okay, uh, just for a couple of questions, Conrad. Can you discuss your previous work that has been done at, at the U of A to construct student housing? Yes, so that would be, if people are familiar with the Euclid Avenue, <clears throat> there's a project there called La Aldea. That was specifically graduate housing for the university. So that was a project that integrated onto the west side or the, the historic west university side of the campus where we took that edge of the campus and developed stu student housing along Euclid. Okay, what was the time frame from inception to finalization of the prep work to the groundbreaking to the ribbon cutting? So that was approximately about 16 months of advanced work prior to the groundbreaking, which include, included extensive um, um, analysis with the students and surveying them exactly on what it is their likes and wants are and so forth, and doing the planning associated with that and working with the West University neighborhood. Thank you. And there, there is a project ongoing now roughly in the area of Fifth Street and Fourth Avenue. Can you elaborate on that project? We can. We, we've been involved in the project. If you're familiar with the old YMCA site as, as well, that, grant, that ground has been broken. It's underway. So there was, uh, in working with uh, uh, um, <laughs> Councilman uh, Steve Kasasich, uh, <laughs> Steve K, uh, was instrumental in leadership of that project and bringing that one to bear. But that's a program that uh, we've been working on over the past uh, you know, 16 months as well, working with the, the West community, working with the, the city staff, and working with a variety of different ways to make that project happen. And I think that that as well leads the path, as we've been talking about the, the light rail and the, the path for, for new enterprise, new growth, those types of projects will, will start to build and create that basis for great things to come. Thank you, Conrad. Uh, at this time, I'd like to bring up Hector Martinez, our interim real estate director. Hector, can you explain the detail, the details in the action being proposed for this land exchange? Mr. Mayor, Council Member, Vice Mayor Fimbres, uh, this exchange is, is, uh, involves surplus property uh, that was purchased originally by transportation in anticipation of the Pino 22nd Corridor uh, improvements, the intersection. Uh, based on current plans, it was determined that portions of this uh, were, could be declared surplus, and that is part of the subject of today's discussion this portion here. What's unique about this transaction and the way it's been approached is an exchange of properties where not only are we looking at this parcel, which if I was to put it on the market today, that's the only parcel I would be able to sell. That would be the, hopefully you have this sheet. Uh, that would be the 119,000 square feet, 419,685 in value based on an appraisal of 350 that was done the latter part of this past year. Uh, in ex and we're also including, because this is an assemblage tied to a proposed development, portions of 23rd Street that are intended to be vacated. We're reserving easements at this time 
for the benefit of the utilities that are underneath there and then some access to some of the private sector entities that live there. As well as we found a portion of a remnant of an alley that is also there. The two additional parcels comprise almost 55,000 square feet of additional land that we could not have marketed otherwise. What that represents, however, at 350 a square foot, that's an additional $192,000 that would be realized as part of this proposed exchange. What we'll be acquiring are portions of properties that have been negotiated in escrow by the developer and that are needed for the 22nd Street widening. And that's represented by the uh, parcel JWR. And that's where, again, we're using the basis of 350 for all the different parcels. That's $26,000. So what we're, they're crediting them, we're crediting them $26,000 against $611,520,000. So the net amount that they will have to pay in cash upon closing will be 585. As a result of these alleys and the uh, and the right away, mm -hmm. we're realizing another 30 percent in uh, surplus property sales. Thank you, Hector. Is this land being assessed at a value current with the market now? Vice Mayor Fimbis, yes. This is based on an MAI appraisal, an independent fee appraisal reviewed by city staff appraiser and approved, and 350 was the uh, agreed upon value. Thank you. As Mr. George Khalil, president of the Melville Neighborhood Association. George, can you come on up? Talk about the, some of the work we've done in this project. Mayor, council, and staff. Basically, I'm president of the Millville Neighborhood Association, and this project's about 85% within our district. And we had a joint meeting at, uh, with the uh, South Park Neighborhood Association as the rest of it and uh, at the councilman's office and we also brought it up at our Millville Neighborhood Association meeting, uh, annual meeting uh, twice and uh, we feel very strong that uh, this will be the beginning second only to the 36th Street and Keno project towards getting the south side rolling um, we've uh, had an open policy at uh, Millville Neighborhood Association that any development, residential or industrial, <coughs> that's what our area is designated. And we think that uh, this project, I sat in on one meeting where they described how it's uh, large enough that they can make a community out of it. And all the little things that they're doing to make sure that it keep it, keep it uh, civil and keep it uh, friendly and keep it a place that students uh, want to live. Um, I think it's a, a real asset to the community. Uh, I, I can recall 10, 12, 15 years ago when there was going to be a supermarket there. Never made it. And this is, I don't want to say this is our last chance, but I think this is an excellent uh, alternative and opportunity to make it work. So we're, we're all in favor of it. And, hope that it uh, gets uh, run through in the proper fashion. Do you have any questions? Nope. Thank you. Thank you, George. My last uh, speaker, Mr. Mayor, would be uh, President is Jonathan Peck, uh, President of the CEO of the, of the Tucson Urban League, who supports this proposal as well as a proposed landmark development at 22nd Street and Park. Jonathan, would you like to say a few words about this project? Sure. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? It's hot out here. It's we should have hot days like we have snow days up in Chicago. Um, we do support this project. Uh, we've met over the past several months. I think this is an excellent model of what collaboration looks like between government, business, and community. Um, the local neighborhood associations, George and his group, and the Urban League um, fully support this project. We're excited to welcome um, the new students to our neighborhood. And our, our, our goal is to uh, not only make sure the project is successful, but to work to integrate the student body into Southside Tucson. We see a great opportunity in terms of the social capital of the 600 students there working across Southside Tucson and a lot of our projects and activities. Uh, I think we're, the concerns that were addressed um, were addressed by landmark properties and their leadership and the developers. 
in terms of the policies, procedures, and all that stuff. So we support it 100% and think that this is um, a great collaboration, and hopefully this can be a model project for future collaborations uh, between the institutions that are represented here in this discussion. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep. I now open it up uh, to my colleagues for questions. Steve, you had some questions? Yeah. The project sounds great, and Conrad and John, thank you for uh, getting together with the neighborhoods and all the stakeholders again. That's really the, your, been your MO in all these projects. Uh, I have some questions just about uh, a few about the terms and the conditions of the agreement. On, uh, on page three of it, there, it, it outlines the, uh, who, own, who owns what and all, on all of that. Section eight, there doesn't appear to be a time frame, though. Uh, I note that um, you I guess it would be John or Conrad, or still need to bring other sellers to the, to the table and Ronco to terms before this is finalized. And if, is that, um, is there a time frame built into that or are we just adopting something with no, no, no uh, constraints built into your, your obligations in terms of bringing things up out of the ground? Okay, uh, the <laughs> the answer, uh, the time frame is uh, related, to, is December 31st is our time frame on the agreement. Um, in that, then we'll, and, and at this present time, we have uh, Ron Coe and, and all the, the properties <coughs> associated with that agreement together. So there's no um, issue with them. but. Their closing of their property and the closing of yours will has a, a definitive time frame of December 31st, and either it will either consummate or, or not at that point. So this is the first domino to fall? Yes. In essence. Okay. On um, the page 5, section 15, uh, are there structures on the, on the property right now? On the, there, there are none? There are none. The city property, there are none. Okay, good. There's dirt. And finally, in section 22, it, it indicates that JWR can assign this agreement to anybody they want to without our consent. Is there also some understanding built into this that student housing and the project that we're hearing about would follow that transfer if it were to occur so that we're not gonna see some sort of bait and switch that the wonderful project that, they, that you've developed, if you wind up jump and ship, then we're not going to wind up with something totally un unrelated. We would, I mean, the intentions, and I'm not, uh, we'd, I'd have to work with Hector on the, the specific language of that, but uh, the intention related to the close date, we would close specifically with the intention to deliver the project um, without an alternative use in mind, and we would only close with that you know, for specifically student housing as we've envisioned it. Um, That's you, but if this is assigned to somebody else. If it was assigned, I think that, that if that was a concern, we, I think Hector, we had worked together to, to create the language necessary to assure that, that you know, I, I don't think we'd have a problem with that. And Council Member Kozacic, that uh, right to assign without uh, consent required from the city is in the circumstance where the assignment is um, to uh, an entity under the control of JWR, so it's not just okay. an assignment to anyone they feel like. It's okay. it's just if, if they change a corporate structure, for yeah, example. I would think that, and in that we will have a um, uh, the holding corp, or that may be a name change and so forth. But within the umbrella of the development enterprise or the entity that would okay, be great, pursuing it. Uh, Councilman Cunningham, I only have one question for the city manager. Is this in the budget, or is this money out? Is this actualized uh, cash uh, new to what we uh, laid out? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I believe this will be a new revenue to our, our budget. Thank you very much. That's very nice to hear. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, with that, I move to approve consent agenda item G. Second. Been moved and seconded discussion. Let me just say, Vice Mayor, a couple of things. What a wonderful project this is. And uh, now I'm looking at uh, uh, Councilmember Uli. It was last week we were talking about preservation 
And, and I'm upset about the balance of preservation and uh, densification because we cannot get at infill, we cannot stop the sprawl unless we have projects that, that uh, really come to fruition. And here we are talking about lighting up, and George is exactly right. Uh, a, a project like this on 22nd Street uh, is, has great uh, meaning, uh, I think, to all of us up here. And uh, yeah. Vice Mayor, uh, you and I have talked about Sinclair properties and what that means to this city and uh, with Costco and other things that are happening. We've also talked about once we get the light modern streetcar connecting from the west side of Hina over the Cushing Street Bridge, uh, downtown to uh, uh, connecting to the university all the way out to Kino. One of the things that we've talked about is what are we going to do next? And one of the things we said if uh, the, we can envision then running down Kino from river to Sinclair. So now this property, which is putting students within half a block of the intersection of the, uh, the brand new Kino over, overpass over 22nd Street, now really begins to make some sense about supporting uh, the university downtown with this new emerging uh, Sinclair uh, property. So this is an extraordinarily exciting uh, project. So everybody had anything to do with this thing. Uh, uh, this is a, a very big deal for the, the city of Tucson and everybody should be congratulated. And it's gonna happen, it's happening. And, and uh, we sit up here and say, when is it gonna happen? It's happening. It's happening. It's happening now. So with that, let's do a roll call. Ms. Romero? Aye. Mr. Cunningham? Uh, John Conrad, Jonathan, great to see you. Mr. Khalil, you'll always be Mr. Khalil to me. I'm an I. Ms. Zulik? Aye. Mrs. Scott? Um, congratulations to uh, my council member to my left, uh, Mr. Fimbris, this is the vice mayor, and also to Mr. Martinez. I really think that uh, is working together, this really makes for a really wonderful, sensible thing. And thank you for including certain properties that otherwise might not have been sold. Congratulations, yeah. aye. Mr. Fimbers. I just want to thank uh, all the folks that have been in meeting and in collaboration uh, to seeing this uh, dream starting to come to, a, to a, a reality. And it's been very positive. Mr. Peck, Mr. Khalil, Mr. Dumont, Mr. Ash, Mr. Sick and uh, Hector and, and uh, City staff that have really helped uh, to move this thing because this is part of that puzzle that's, that's coming, together. coming together. And I vote a yes. Mr. Kazachi. Aye. Mayor Walker. Aye, pass 7 0. And congratulations, everybody. That's a great job.